Previously, on The Mole, Paul and Nicole had it out for each other from the start. Nicole is the type of person you love to hate. I hate her. I'm gonna kill you while you sleep. I will beat you in this game. I am here to stay. The players' minds and suspicions were tested in a memorable mission. We're dumb. <laughs> Craig tried to mess me up. Shame! For the first time in the game, Clay decided to deceive. Did you go 100% Nicole? Yeah. Who'd you stick with the last quiz? Craig. You did Craig? I did Craig too. I need to be willing to mislead people. And Clay became the mole's next victim. 12 strangers, 10 weeks, one winner, taking home up to a half million dollars. But one of them is being paid to deceive the others and sabotage their missions. That person is the mole, the player that figures out who the mole is and does the best job of tracking and remembering their every move wins the money. Can you figure it out? Who is the mole? Clay was my friend, he was my coalition partner, he was the one person that except for a fleeting moment of my weakness, uh, I always felt that I could trust. Tonight, something went wrong. I'm really disappointed that that had to happen at Clay's expense. I've got two suspects. Now I gotta go play this game with Paul and Nicole. Quizzes, exams, whatever you wanna call it, when I see one, I wanna kick ass, and so, hell, I kicked ass, I guess, because I'm still here. Guess that makes me a badass, huh? I only have two more people to knock out to take home a lot of money. Pull out, kid. Final foe, final foe, woo! <laughs> Final four, and currently the pot stands at three hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars. Yeah, you guys, definitely heading in the right direction. Today's mission is called "How's the View," and this one's worth sixty-four thousand dollars. As you can see right now, we're standing in an old abandoned mill on the outskirts of Buenos Aires. And I know right now it looks fairly unremarkable, but as you'll see today, you cannot always trust what your eyes are telling you. Right now. I need two players who consider themselves young at heart. Okay. <laughs> Usually when John asks for something, I want to be the first one up there. That and the fact that I saw Craig raise his hand. Craig is my top suspect. I want to be matched up with the person who I suspect the most. Go ahead. I'm, oh, you and me, we're young at heart. Here we go. All right. And right now I need you to split up into teams with each team having one young at heart person on it. Hmm. Every time I think I have a grip on something, John screws it up. Okay, I guess I will just do that. All right. <laughs> okay. That works. So the teams are Paul and Mark, Nicole and Craig. Nicole and Craig being on the same team again is another opportunity to see how they're going to perform, to see if there's anything that looks suspicious. All right, today's mission, all you have to do is complete an obstacle course for kids. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was going to be a twist in some way that my nephew would probably make fun of me. He's seven. Young at heart, you'll be wearing these. They're called My View Goggles. And these will be linked to this video camera. Now what this camera sees, the person wearing them will see. The player wearing the goggles will only see what their partner shoots. And since it's a mirrored image, it will be backwards. Mark and Nicole, you're operating the camera, so you'll be Paul and Craig's eyes. But you're not allowed to speak during this mission. Not being able to speak to Paul during the mission is going to be very difficult. It's frustrating for me not to be able to speak ever. OK, which team wants to go first? We'll go first. We'll do it. If I had to choose one player that was going to be my reverse eyes, I'd want it to be Mark. He plays to win this game. He plays to get the money. OK, guys, today we're going to test your manual dexterity, basically an IQ test. 
for tots. <laughs> Mark, why don't you go ahead and turn on the camera so Paul can see what we're doing. Paul, can you see anything? I see, oh, there we go. I'm getting some serious yep. okay. feedback. Like, no matter what happens, I could always blame it on the person having the camera. I could always blame, you know, something going wrong with the goggles. I think I had an advantage at that point. Okay, little fellas, we've got these three little shapes here, <laughs> and you're going to try to put them inside this pretty purple and green box using the same shaped holes. For every shape you put into the hole, I'll add $1,000 to the pot. Okay. So by doing that, that means you can put a total of $3,000 into the pot. Nice. Got it? Got Beautiful. it. Beautiful. It's a lot tougher than it seems. <laughs> and remember, since Mark is opposite of you, everything you see will be backwards, and you'll have one minute <sighs> to pull this off. Starts now. In your mind, you're saying your right is your left, and your brain is telling you, no, it's not. Your, your right is your right, your left is your left. So your mind starts playing tricks with you. It was a lot harder than it seemed. That's a star. That's a star right there. That's one. One, one thousand dollars, fifteen it. seconds in. All right, what else do we have? Thirty seconds. I can't, it's, I'm getting feedback, I can't. Two thousand dollars, you have twenty seconds left. It's more frustrating, I wish I had his job, because I'm a very visual person. Just not to talk is driving me insane. I wanna, I wanna scream at him. Bingo. Woo! Congratulations, you've added $3,000 to the pot. I'm getting like serious feedback here. Craig, can you see here? Okay. Can you see? Yeah, I can. Can you see yourself? Can... Oh, hey, what oh. up, dude? So just me or do you look like oh. a cop? You have 60 mm -hmm. seconds starting now. Okay. You can ask her to help you with the directed. She just can't okay. respond. I'm a laparoscopic surgeon. Everything is done by camera, and everything is backwards. The spatial relation for me would have been cake. You can ask for help. Oh. One down. Got it. One thousand dollars. I am concerned over Nicole's placement on the camera. I don't know if that was because of lack of familiarity with the camera or simply because she was trying to get me to mess up. Okay, There's 2,000. 30 seconds left, final piece. It is much harder than it looks. Am I on the right side? She uh, can't talk, yeah. she oh. can't talk. He asked me a question and I instinctively answer, knowing good and well, I'm not supposed to. And I don't know whether he's trying to mull something up. So that's a little suspicious for me. Is there any more? That's three. Okay, little guy, the good news is you got all three pieces in your box. Yay! The bad news, you asked for help one time. Oh. Nicole actually responded. And that was on the final piece. So that means you put $2,000 in out of a possible three. Nicole broke the rules, and she tries to mess up things on purpose. OK, guys, you have two soccer balls. You'll have one kick at each ball. And each ball you get into the net is worth $4,500. And Paul, keep in mind, what you're seeing in the goggles is backwards. You have 60 seconds to get it done, starting now. All right, Mark, give me a closer view on my foot. Oh, here we go. What I did is I gave him a view that gave him a perfect straight line from the ball to the net. Just a bit outside. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. So that all he really needed to do was just walk up and poke. Ah, oh, I missed that one. I felt it. He didn't even come close to the goal. His behavior was suspicious. So you go 0 for 2. Craig? Yeah? You have 60 seconds. Starting now. Can I see the balls? Wide shot? OK. The soccer game is much harder than I expected. I couldn't tell where the ball was for me to kick it. It's got a chance. Yeah. Ah! 20 seconds remaining to tee up one more. Ah. The swing and the miss. When he goes for the second one, and it goes all the way to the left and has nothing to do with the net, it does make me a little bit suspicious. Uh, yeah, that one wasn't even close. Paul, this should be a good one for you. You have a young daughter. Yes. She probably likes to have little tea cups out and have a little spot we of tea. All the time we have tea, tea parties. So you have to fill up this cup to the line, and you can't spill any tea outside of the saucer. When me and my daughter have our little tea parties, there's no actual tea involved. This is worth $10,000. OK. Well, you'll have one minute. One minute to do it, 2,500 per teacup. Does that make sense? Hey, man, do not touch the host. You have one minute starting now. OK. OK, 
You got skills, kid. I thought that the teacup game would be the hardest, trying to manipulate a little teapot, and we men tend to be a little clumsy to begin with. Nice, man. <laughs> two down, two to go. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. You've got 10 more seconds. I need a wider, wider view, dude. Why of you? Mark would do funny things with the camera. You know, zoom in when he probably shouldn't have been zooming in, zooming out when he probably shouldn't have been zooming out. I'd look at that as a suspicious activity. Three, two, one. Uh, uh. Third one, strong butt. Take a close look. Oh, you gotta be kidding right me, Right there John. at the end, pal. Three full, but only two count, $5,000. It's not a bad effort. Man. Mission starts now. Okay, can you get a shot on the teapot? Okay. Uh, teapot, not my hands, on the teapot. Nicole would have been much better wearing these goggles rather than holding the camera. So I really don't think she has a, a future in movie making. Easy does it. Uh, There's one. $2,500. 30 seconds. Oops. Had a little spill there. Uh. Whoa. Craig overfilled the glasses, even though I started shaking the camera like, there's a line, stop, and he overfilled it on purpose because then he bumps the table, and oh gee, drops, fall. There we go. <laughs> I'm not really a tea party type of guy. Five, four, three, two, one. First one, great pour, but remember crash into the table? Uh. Yeah, a bunch of spills. So, no dollars on that one. Number two, Decent spill, but as you can see over here, one, two drops. Okay. And then number three, <sighs> offset a little bit, but clean, no drips, no spills, no errors. So I'll add $2,500 to the pot. I got one. You did get one. <laughs> All right. Enough with these kid games. I've saved the best for last. I don't even know what I'm doing, and I, I feel my knees starting to shake already. Is that you, John? That is me. I don't know if I like you anymore. <laughs> As Paul stands two stories high, he can't see anything and he doesn't know where he is until the camera is turned on. Before I turn your eyes back over to Mark, I want to give you maybe a little uh, bird's eye view of what you'll be working with here. Oh my God, you got to be kidding me. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh my God. Taking it all in. You gotta be kidding me right now. Oh my God! I'm standing on a plank high above somewhere. And then John turns on that camera and shows you where you really are and you're like, oh, oh my God. God. I'm in a world of trouble now. You must walk the plank and pick up the piece of chalk in the middle. At that point, you have one minute to get to the other side and copy exactly what's on the chalkboard. If you succeed, I will add $10,000 to the pot. All right, time to get the game started. Mark, I want you to keep it at that angle for now. Wow. <laughs> Mark is my eyes, and this is his opportunity to screw something up. So I, I was a little nervous that something life-threatening or, or a dangerous activity that, you know, I, my eyes were in the hands of somebody else. Oh boy. Okay. Just like watching TV. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, the first step's a killer, man. Ah. Oh my God. How the hell am I supposed to pick this up? Once you grab the chalk, I will start the clock. All right. There it is, you now have one minute. Ah, uh, this interference really sucks. And of course, Paul saying that he was getting interference could have been mole activity. Paul, how's the view? It's, uh, <laughs> oh, we blacked out right in the middle here. You know you have to beat the clock. Um, so pressure starts to build up. Is somebody gonna help me off this thing? All right, right from here. 15 seconds. Bowl was here. 10, 9, 8, 7. Oh! Woo! Got it! From my view, the only thing I saw on that board was uh, mole was here. 
And uh, that's where I thought that Mark did a suspicious act. Just barely made it. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations, oh, the mole was man. here. Woo! I can actually read it too. Woo! <laughs> here, give, me, give me a high five. Spell. Can you see the high five in there? <laughs> Almost no. <it's> a... <laughs> I feel great about accomplishing that task and putting $10,000 in the pot, but again, all it does is make me a little more suspicious because he sure did well on that one, but couldn't manage to kick a soccer ball straight. This is going to be a tough, tough thing for Craig to do. He might make his way across that plank. It just might take him, you know, a couple hours to do it. Okay, Craig, I realize right now you can't see, uh, but before I turn your eyes over to Nicole, I wanted to give you a little perspective from one of our cameras of what you're working with. This sucks. You people are sadistic. <laughs> combining vertigo and an intense fear of heights is like combining intense drunkenness with something that you're intensely allergic to at the same time. It's not gonna be a good scene. Oh, God. You know, this is high up here, and you do have some vertigo. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I have to try. Just keep keep the camera steady. Doing good. How's that feel so far, man? Dangerous. I know he has a problem with heights. Now, whether or not it's a big fat fib, for the game's sake, who knows? But. I knew he was going to have a bit of difficulty walking across. Uh, Nicole, please zoom in on the chalk. You bend over to pick up that chalk. Can you please zoom in on the chalk? He thinks he's at the chalk. I know. And he's right on the edge. Look at his foot. Uh, uh, whoa, whoa. Whoa. OK. He's looking at this piece of chalk that he can't see and is not there. I had no idea he was actually four feet away from me. What's he doing? If he takes even a half a step back, he's done. My idea is to go beyond the chalk and then bend over backwards to pick it up. Now, the only problem with this plan is that when my feet get on the other side of the chalk, I can no longer see the chalk. Oh, great, now I can't see the chalk. 60 seconds. So Craig picks up the chalk and he starts veering to one side. 30 oh. seconds left, Craig. And it's very, very tentative with his steps and takes a long time. You have to take uh. a chance and pick up the pace if you're going to make it. 20 seconds. Still got a ways to go. Five seconds. Four, three, two, uh. one. Time is up. I wasn't. That was scary. The tough news, oh. $10,000 goes right over the edge. I felt really bad. Like, come on, we could have done a little bit better. I mean, even if he is a mole like dog, you didn't have to mole it up that bad. He could have given us something. OK, players, solid job today with my little games. Paul and Mark, you added $18,000 to the pot. Nicole and Craig added $4,500 to the pot. So $22,500 for the day, that's less than half the possible $64,000, which brings your grand total to $353,500. I found it a little odd that Craig and Nicole only put $4,500 in the pot. After the mission, the players unwind at dinner. You were the funniest thing to watch trying to grab the chalk that was not there. <laughs> I'm like, what is he doing? I'm going to go use the restroom. Me too. I think there was suspicious activity from Craig during this mission. Oh, how did you do it with the cameras? Like, huh? how could you, how did you try to orient yourself? Because everything was backwards. I just it kept telling my head, right my right is my left. My left is my right. Craig kept just doing everything the other way. And I'm like, OK, maybe the first few, fine. I could see how he does it, because as much as I was saying, my right is my left, my left is my right, I still you found your brain just trying to trying do another. Craig is my top suspect. But uh, if I can cast any doubt in Nicole's mind, I'm going to try to do it. Log on to ABC.com to take tonight's quiz.
Clay and I had a coalition since day one. Now, for the first time, I'm 100% on my own. I have to rework everything now, which is the worst part about Clay not being here. What up, homie? What up, see diggity? I can't remember a time, first of all, that there's been as few exemptions as there's been. Yeah. There absolutely has to be an exemption tonight. I'm just trying to figure out how it's gonna play out. That's a free pass to, for somebody to a heads or tails chance at all the money. 50-50. I know it's coming. I've been telling everybody it's coming. Everybody keeps telling me I'm paranoid. Everybody keeps telling me, stop getting me all wound up. But I'm focused on exemption. It's blowing me. That's all I've been able to think about today, to be honest with you. We all know that this is the most important exemption in the game. And uh, we're all going to be fighting for it. Other than me not making it to the final three, the next worst possibility would me be in the final three with those two. <laughs> <laughs> but what if you're the mole? Then you're all screwed. <laughs>
I'm pretty sure I can figure it out. I'm more worried about the other players figuring out before me. Call mall mail. It was that simple. Wrote it down. It always takes me a while to get the word puzzle. But when it comes, it comes immediately. The cell door opened. You gotta be kidding me, somebody's out already. And I saw none of the doors open, and so enormous sense of relief. Mark solved the doublet problem in 53 seconds. My biggest concern is that I've never played a game of competitive paintball in my life. It couldn't have been more foreign to me. Nicole, it's wrong. Nicole's first answer had an error. I'm thinking like, well, this might be a word, this might be a word, and I put the chain together and uh, wrote it down and put it out the door. I was very surprised to find that I was, I was not the first one out. I really wanted to shoot people. I don't get this. Fell, right? No, because then I have to do, Mel isn't a word. I mean, it was a little confusing, and I'm thinking we have to change every letter in the word. So, I mean, you know, I sat there for a couple minutes just dumbfounded. Damn it, I don't get this. I thought it was gonna be a five letter. I should have listened a little better. Mark's never shot anything before in his life. Mm -hmm. I think we have a much better chance. I'm glad it's not Paul, because we all be dead. Craig and I decide to wait for Paul because Paul's played paintball before. So we wait and we wait. It felt like forever. I think he's in there working on the puzzle or is he doing graffiti? Oh, he might be escaping out the other side. This call, mall, and then I change it to mail, and then mall. I think that's, I think that's right. Yeah. You are correct. Everybody's out. Ah. They decided to wait for you. I was pleasantly surprised to see them both, you know, outside my cell when I got out. So what'd you That's wait for me one? for? Because for you do paintball, and I don't do right, My plan war. is Nicole yes. just run in there and draw fire, and okay. then we go behind you. <laughs> well, I gotta go first. Well, I was gonna no, say you faster. first for a second, and me third, because I'm slow. <laughs> yeah. You should be the blocker, actually. You're the biggest guy. We should just run behind run you. Run behind me. I'm most likely to get hit. The best thing I can see us doing is somebody has to draw fire and then somebody has to go. To secure a spot in the final three, I must win exemption. At this point, it's more important for us to just get through that door, not for the money, but to eliminate the exemption for Mark. We were all about trying to keep Mark from getting that exemption. Go! Go! Woo! Mark and Mark! The game's final exemption is on the line. If Mark hits the player with the exemption card, he will earn the exemption and guarantee a spot in the final three. The players must make it to the end of the obstacle course without getting tagged by a paintball. At this point, my biggest fear is that Mark will receive an exemption. Somebody has to draw fire and then somebody has to go. When he moves out of The money didn't matter at that point. There's a guy with a gun, and you're pretending it's not Mark. Kind, gentle Mark with three children. Three, go. <clears throat> Me and Nicole worked pretty good together. I mean, you have to put your pride to the side to try to stop Mark from getting the exemption. Party! Strategies work great. We're leapfrogging from cover to cover. And when Mark's focus is on Paul, then Nicole and I move. And when his focus is on me, then Nicole and Paul move, and so forth. Woo! Mark doesn't have the killer instinct. The one night I need exemption, and you pull out the one thing that I have no predisposition for. Got him, yes. You're done. No, I'm not. I hit him right in the chest. Is there any paint on me? No. I nailed him in the chest, you guys. Give me a break. It's got a break, man. 
I, I saw it hit. It was frustrating. I was like, the paintball has to break. Are you kidding? Okay, this is ridiculous. And I almost lost it at that point. Are you kidding me? That's just... <sighs> Mark was so getting agitated. I was 30 feet away from him, and I could see the sweat running down his face. But I knew that maybe Nicole, you know, being as small and as fast as she is, she'd be a harder target to hit. I got her. That hit her. He got me. I'm out. I'm out, Mark. Thank you. Lucky shot. I'm sitting at that last barricade. Saw a perfect opportunity. <laughs> and uh, I was lucky enough to make it through. Paul did get away. That pellet, I just missed him. I, I'll, I'll see that shot forever. <laughs> Woo! I can see Mark, and he's looking around, being distracted. There we go. When I tried to move to the next barricade, he got me right in the shoulder. Right back here. <laughs> well, players, I heard a lot of noise out there and a lot of paintballs flying. Paul, you being slick, shifty, and quick, you added $15,000 to the pot. That goes to my personal account, right? <laughs> Not so much. It's time to find out who has the exemption. Mark, you probably want to know, right? Sure. What you didn't know is the player who had the exemption was predetermined by the cell number you chose. You have each been given a card. Let's see who has the exemption. The only thing I'm glad for right now is that we have at least one shot of not giving you an exemption right now. And I don't feel good about that, so. We'll start with Nicole. Let's see what's on your card. Yes. One person down, you know, and I'm saying now there's a 50-50 shot that he's not getting this exemption. Nicole, your card is empty, so that means Mark did not earn an exemption from you. That's right. All right. We now check with Craig. Craig, please show us your card. Oh, my gosh. I thought my chest was going to explode. It would mean a lot to me to get the game's final exemption. You're talking about a 50-50 chance at the money. So, I mean, it's huge. Now check with Craig. Craig, please show us your card. We're all praying that Paul is the one who's holding the exemption. Ah. Exemption. So Mark, by hitting Craig, you in fact have earned yourself the game's final exemption, guaranteeing yourself a spot in the finals. Wow. It was just like a, an enormous weight being taken off my shoulders that I'm in. I'm in. I got a 50-50 shot at all the money now. Could not be happier. Mark, by hitting two players, you lost a potential 30,000, but you had $15,000 to the pot, compliments of Paul making it there. And that brings your grand total to $368,500. <sighs> it just, it just doesn't seem right like that, you know? That an exemption is given at this point in the game give him a lot of credit for getting it, and I'd want Mark to get it, because I believe Mark is, is one of the best men that I've ever met. I mean, but, you know, we made it this far with our wits, with what we've done to get here, and then the last round, an exemption's given out, and it's like, you're getting a free pass to 50% to, to at, a, at, a, at a half a million dollars. Like, that's... It eats me from inside out. It's horrible. So right now, get cleaned up. I'll see all four of you for dinner. Good job, Mark. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Good to see you. Pleasure, yeah. my man. I could actually say this is the first time I'm nervous in the whole time I'm here. Yeah. It's very interesting. Tonight's a little different. It's like I'm playing for the money. I have a 50-50 shot. So for the first time in this competition, I'm a little nervous. Tonight is the biggest night of this entire trip. It, you know, it culminates everything we've done so far. I think me and Nicole can agree on that tonight. We can definitely <laughs> agree on that, right? Definitely yeah. agree on that tonight, John. You know? <laughs> as much as I don't like some of the things that Nicole has done, in the back of my mind, I have to respect her. She's used a lot of the same tactics that I've used, which kind of freaks me out. We played a very similar game, and I guess it worked. Because we both still sitting here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey.
I feel like there are two forces of good and two forces of evil. Me and Mark being on the good side and Nicole and Paul being on the bad side, one of the four of us is the mole. And as the table shrinks too, is it while you're getting closer shoulder to shoulder with the actual mole? I'll tell you straight out, flat out, I don't think it's Nicole. 